There are three huge watercolor mistakes I see people make all the time and that either limits their progress or makes them feel like they're not good enough. So fix these and your paintings and confidence will improve immediately. The first one has to do with never using enough water. I see it all the time in the classes that I teach in my local community. What a beginner will do is wet a paintbrush, activate the paint, and deposit it in their mixing tray. At this point, most people think that since the mix is a bit wet, it must be enough. But it's not. And that's because there are many benefits to using a good amount of water with your watercolors. And one of them is to help colors move on paper, which works great to create gorgeous backgrounds as watercolors can easily flow and mix with each other to create new colors. What beginners in particular are not always aware of unless they're told is that you can only easily achieve that effect of colors flowing and merging together on paper when your mix leans towards a watery to creamy consistency. You're going to see it here very clearly. Same paper, same paint, same paintbrush. Just a different consistency in the paint since for the experiment on the left side, I barely added any water to the mix. And clearly, I'm struggling a bit to cover that background quickly. You can also see the paintbrush marks. That's another downside of not having enough water. What you can't see is this background would also dry faster than the one on the right. And that's because I couldn't keep it wet with such a dry paintbrush. Now, when we paint with a creamy consistency as shown on the right side, it is noticeably easier for paints to spread out and I'm able to cover that area much faster. No brush marks either. You can see this as well in my painting of a tree for Halloween. The background looks super smooth and flawless. When you don't add enough water to your mixes, I just explained your background or base layer will dry a lot faster. Not only will colors have a harder time to move around, but that is also going to make it difficult to add more colors or shapes and have them melt into the background. New paint strokes you might be adding will stay visible because the paint is simply too thick to be able to spread out effortlessly. And the background is already almost dry too, so the paint stays where you applied it. You will end up with a pretty inconsistent background that does not look smooth, full of brush marks, blooms, and blotches of paint. As you learn to paint with watercolors like I did over the past three years, it becomes clear that that effect of colors flowing on paper is helpful in a vast majority of styles, even when a painting seems detailed. That's why you really want to fix this mistake sooner than later. A quick fix to making dry mixes is to dip your paintbrush in water, then in the paint, then in water again, and so on, whenever you want to mix a color. And then always check it looks creamy like this before you start painting. It should also feel easy to apply the paint on paper, whether the paper is dry or wet. Also, remember about that first mistake that you also need to have wet your sheet enough so both paint and paper are equally wet, and you also need a good type of watercolor paper. These three components are important for beautiful backgrounds. I love to add depth to my background, so next I added a second layer of paint. Because it's a second layer and my paper is already filled with paint, I added just a tad of pigment to my mix. It's a little bit thicker, but still creamy. And with that small change, I know the paint will show better on that second layer, which is going to help in building up contrast and depth. Now take the tree as another example of how important it is to avoid the first mistake of not wetting your paint mixes enough. Imagine trying to create branches with a thick mix. It's much harder to make strokes, the paint is noticeably too dry. It can give your painting a certain look if that's something you like, but for me, I find it prevents me from making clean strokes. As you move throughout the painting, you can make your paint mixes thicker and thicker until it's time to add the final details. Here, I want my tree to be more opaque towards the base, so I add more pigment so the mix thickens. 
The paint is not easy to apply but it's done on certain areas only so it's not bothersome at all and it shows well and finishes the piece beautifully, especially when I add the highlights in contrast to my shadows. So you can see that in some cases, using a thick mix of paint is fine and it will give a different artistic look to your painting too. But overall, it's going to be much more effective and easy to start with a mix of paint that is creamier thanks to added water. Briefly, before we get to the second mistake, to improve on understanding the water to paint ratio better and to get more guidance from me, I'll link in the description my most watched Skillshare class where I teach how to master water and paint with simple but beautiful galaxy paintings. The second huge watercolor mistake most are doing is to use cheap paper. A lot of people prefer to start on a budget, which is completely understandable. But in my classes, online and offline, I often see that they're not getting the results they want. That's because, sadly, cheap paper will ruin your efforts when it comes to watercolor. To me, it's like trying to swim with a bunch of weights attached to your feet. You could work with the best paintbrushes and paints on the market. They won't help if the watercolor paper is of poor quality. It is by far the most important supply to make a difference in the results you're getting. There are several types of watercolor paper. The two most common ones are cellulose, also called wood pulp, and then cotton papers. This is an example of cellulose paper. Not the worst quality, it's an affordable type that I'll recommend to people who just want to see they like watercolor. There are plenty on the market like it. Note that if there's no mention on the cover of what the paper is made of, it's very likely it's cellulose paper. This one here is 100% cotton paper, and you will see that mention on the cover when it's cotton. There are several brands and price ranges for this, but overall, this type is pricier and in the beginning, it feels awkward to go and buy that, even though it's an absolute game changer in watercolor. No matter what type you select for your current budget, I would advise to go for a cold press finish and a weight of 300 grams per square meter. The finish cold press, hot press, or rough shows directly in the texture, the grain of the paper, and indirectly in how well the paper retains water. Cold pressed and rough papers are best to retain water, and out of the two, cold press, in my opinion, suits all watercolor projects and styles as it is neither too smooth like hot press nor too grainy like rough papers. That's why I recommend that one. I'm not trying to convince you to invest in 100% watercolor papers. However, I'd like to show you the difference between that one and the other types in case you're not getting the results you want and you've never tried 100% cotton. I'm going to add Arteza 100% cotton cold pressed paper in my experiment because I tested it and even though it's not the best cotton paper, it gives good results with an affordable price for cotton. So it's a great compromise if you'd like to up your watercolor paper quality and at the same time your results without breaking the bank. I hear the brand Bao Hong is great too and not too pricey, but it's harder to find online so I haven't tried it. So here we have a cheap cellulose paper, a mid-range 100% cotton paper, and a pricey but highly qualitative 100% cotton paper. They're old cold pressed papers that I explained earlier. First, see what happens when we wet them for an extended period of time. It's hard to tell in the video, however, when I add the water, I can feel that the cheap paper gets slippery more quickly, while the other two take the water pretty well. Something else I noticed with cellulose papers is they tend to buckle really fast, whereas in a 100% cotton paper, water penetrates inside easily. As I'm painting using exactly the same technique on all three, wetting each of them for as long and adding the same consistency of paint, right now they all seem to give a nice result. When the paint dries is when you can tell the difference better by just looking at them three. The higher quality the paper is, the more consistent the paint looks, whether we paint a background or in more detail.
The cellulose paper and Arteza paper show more blooms than ash paper because they just don't take water as well, so the water sits on top more. Overall, Arteza paper is great to find, but the best one is ash. No patches or marks of any kind, the paint looks smooth all over and the colors also look better, especially next to the cheaper paper, where they look pretty bland in comparison. I know some people are happy with cellulose paper, and I think it depends on style and expectations. The third huge watercolor mistake people make is to want every stroke to look perfect. What's interesting with watercolor is that getting your strokes to look perfect, like you would with pencil, colored pencil, or ink, is not going to help your painting look any better or more realistic. It's actually quite the opposite because with watercolors, there's a big nuance between perfection and realism, and for realistic painters and perfectionists, it's really hard to wrap our mind around that when we first start watercolor. And no matter what your painting style is, it is going to be important to train yourself to let go to some degree. The sooner you're aware of this, the better. For example, what I see my students do when we paint a background is they try to fill out all parts. I see it is really hard for them to leave out areas and to do it in a carefree way, like I'm doing here in this painting. This background is meant to look foggy, so it's logical to leave out some parts to create the mist effect with areas that are almost paper white. And I do it in a spontaneous way, which means for the specific example, I just quickly tap the paintbrush in the places I want the mist, and by quickly, I mean without much care nor planning of exactly where I do it and how the shape I leave on paper looks like, a rough way to do it is enough. With pencil, for instance, you would need to make gentle strokes and press lightly to create a gradient from dark to light areas. You couldn't just scribble and hope to achieve a nice mist effect. With watercolor, two layers for me and my style are enough to create a super smooth, deep and beautiful background. Besides, when I add my second layer, I know I can improve the areas in that background that need more depth too. That's why I will tell you that when you start painting a base layer in all watercolors, there is no need to get everything to look very neat and perfect. For beginners, I understand it is trickier because they like the vision of where that painting might go, because they're not yet used to painting with watercolors. You learn to be less tight and trust the process more as you practice. And it's important to understand that, I think, to stay motivated. Another thing I think everyone should know about watercolor is that at first, a watercolor painting looks ugly. So much so that we have a name for it, the ugly stage. Colors are really bland, detail is lacking, and because of that, people think they're failing, that they need to paint everything perfect, pencil work style, from the get-go. But the way watercolor works, you can see it here very clearly in the different stages of my paintings. A piece of art comes together layer after layer. Past that awkward, ugly stage, we're able to get something going. To achieve this, try and think of a painting in terms of layers, not sections. Think of it from background to middle ground to foreground. Focus on main colors and shapes first, the ones you distinguish in the background of your reference photo. And once you have that base, Refine that as you go. Keep strong additions like shadows, highlights, and details for last. Another example that still has to do with perfectionism and that I see my students do is to paint everything the same in an effort to get it to look neat. This is not what makes realism in a watercolor. You see the nuance here. If I space all branches out in the same way that I paint them all the same, the tree will look boring. It is better if the branches here look different and even crooked. It gives the painting more charm and a more genuine look. When you add texture, it's the same. You want it to be quite spontaneous in the sense it's not going to be done with extreme care because we don't want it to look too consistent all across the tree. Remember, it's the addition of all the layers in your paintings that make the final piece, but not everything needs to be flawless in order for the art to look stunning. Each part comes together towards the end. It's a big aha moment with my students when we paint something. They're not convinced at the beginning and much more enthusiastic towards the end when we start adding detail. Now you've got this knowledge, I urge you to start practicing and what's better than understanding how to manage water and paint. 
That's why I created this video here. So make sure to watch that next to get your first concrete results. I hope you enjoyed this. See you soon for more watercolor help.